Off we got a couple of different models that represent what we want here. I like this one better for the, um, the chromium clavicular joint here. So we have this one here that joins the clavicle and the acromion process. This is going to be the acromion clavicular. The acromion clavicular right up here on top. Joins the clavicle and the acromion process. You guys need to you know, slide forward or something? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you can kind of shift the skeleton. Okay. So that's the acromion clavicular right here. Stretching from clavicle to acromion process. Then we have these two guys here that stretch from the conoid tubercle of the clavicle down to the coracoid process. This is the coracoclavicular. It's two little guys right here under the clavicle. This is the coracoclavicular. Right there. Two little guys right there is the coracoclavicular. Right underneath the clavicle. Coracoclavicular. And then we have that ligament that stretches from scapula to scapula, from the coracoid process to the acromial process, or acromion process, the coracoacromial, which we see right here. Coracoacromial, stretching from coracoid to acromion process, coracoacromial, right there. So acromioclavicular on top, coracoclavicular, these two right below the clavicle, and then uh, coracoacromial stretching across. Okay. Moving down to the rotator cuff tendons. This guy's a little bit better for this. We have first the supraspinatus muscle, which is going to be above the spine of the scapula in the supraspinatus fossa. So supraspinatus muscle here, which of course will have the supraspinatus tendon that will wrap over top. So supraspinatus muscle. We have the infraspinatus, which has mostly been cut away, but would be sitting in the infraspinatus fossa. We can see a little bit of it right here at the end. It's the infraspinatus muscle, which would then have the infraspinatus tendon wrapping around the humeral head there. It only... Infraspinatus muscle. It's only around the humeral head, not around the whole scapula. It, it comes off, so it's sitting within the infraspinatus okay. fossa. And it comes out and attaches to the femoral head, inserts gotcha. on the femoral head. It's going to be, uh, its origin is going to be along the um, uh, vertebral border of the scapula here. Mm -hmm. So it's going to stretch out here and cross that. And we just see a remnant of it here. We see the subscapularis, which is sitting within the subscapular fossa. Again, we see a little remnant of it here from what they cut off. It was on the anterior side of the scapula here. Subscapularis, right here. We see a little bit of it right there. We come and sit in the subscapular fossa. And then the teres minor tendon isn't really well represented on any of the models we have. Like this little bit here coming off the humerus is what we got for teres minor, although it's really not an ideal representation at all. It should be a bit higher up and forming more of a cup with the rest, but that's kind of what we got. So Terra's minor tendon is this little bit here. Not a great representation of it. Okay. And so those four together are going to make the rotator cuff. They come up and around and wrap around the head of the human. Okay. okay, let's see here. Okay. Oh. Glenoid labrum, forgot to show that to you too. <clears throat> if we pull the scapula back and kind of expose the glenoid cavity, we can see the glenoid labrum right down in there. Right down there, inside the glenoid fossa there. Glenoid labrum right in there. Just a little pad right in the base there. The glenoid labrum. The glenoid labrum, you see right in that little gap there, right between the humerus and the scapula. Okay. Moving on down the arm at the uh, elbow joint, the one major ligament we have is the um, annular ligament, and it's kind of fused with a bunch of other ones here. It's this little bit here. It's wrapping around the head of the radius. 
right here. It's the only ligament we're really going to worry about at the elbow here. Is the annular ligament wrapping around the head of the radius. Annular ligament wrapping around the head of the radius here. We can, of course, tell this is the radius because it has the radial tuberosity right down there below it. And we also see the medial epicondyle here on the humerus. So our annular ligament was right here, wrapping around the head of the radius there. Now you also have the interosseous ligaments, the interosseous membrane. That's just the ligaments that form the syndesmosis bands that hold the ulna and radius together. They're not actually on this model, they would just be between the ulna and radius here. The interosseous membrane or interosseous ligaments are just the syndesmosis ligaments that would stretch from radius to ulna. Okay. Move on down with the pelvic girdle here. Now, with the pelvic girdle, you're going to have the coxal bones meeting the sacrum, forming the sacroiliac joint, where the two auricular surfaces come together and the coxal bones meet the sacrum. You are, of course, going to have a bunch of ligaments holding this whole area together. And on the front side, there will be the anterior or ventral sacroiliac ligaments. So we have a whole bunch of ventral sacroiliac ligaments wrapped around the front. Ventral sacroiliac ligaments wrapping around the front here. And then on the back side, you'll have the dorsal sacroiliac ligaments. Again, we don't have any models with them, just they'll be covering the sacroiliac joint here. The dorsal sacroiliac ligaments will be just covering this whole area in the back. Then we have a couple of ligaments that stretch across the pelvis, which I've represented with colored tape here. We have one that goes from the sacrum to the ischial spine, represented by my yellow tape here. This is going to be the sacrospinous. So going from, oops, right there, going from sacrum to ischial spine, my yellow tape here is the sacrospinous. Sacrospinous going from sacrum to ischial spine there. And then we have this one that stretches from sacrum to ischial tuberosity. Sacrum to ischial tuberosity is the sacrotuberous. The sacrotuberous stretches from sacrum to ischial tuberosity, which I'm re represented by pink tape right here. Sacrotuberous. Finally, right up in front, we'll have a ligament that stretches from the pubic tubercle to the superior anterior iliac spine. This is the inguinal ligament, the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal ligament right here stretches from the pubic tubercle to the anterior superior iliac spine there. So from anterior superior iliac spine to pubic tubercle is the inguinal ligament right here. Inguinal ligament. Okay. Looking at the hip itself, we have several ligaments wrapping around the uh, coxal femoral joint here. First off, right up on top, we have the iliofemoral, basically going to run from the ilium to the femur, right up on top of the whole thing. Iliofemoral, right here, right on top. If we go forward to the pubis, you'll notice there's a couple of ligaments stretching from the pubis to the femur. This is the pubofemoral, stretching from pubis to femur, basically from the superior pubic ramus to the femur there. Pubofemoral, right up here in front. Pubofemoral. And then on the back side, stretching from the ischium, right about the ischial spine to the femur, we have the ischiofemoral. So ischiofemoral going right from the ischial spine off of the femur. Ischiofemoral right here. Going from ischial spine, well, near the ischial spine to the femur there. And so it's pubofemoral, iliofemoral, ischiofemoral. Pubofemoral, iliofemoral, 
ischiofemoral, pubofemoral, iliofemoral, ischiofemoral. Okay, and then we would have the ligamentum capitis femoris if we could separate out these two going between the head of the femur and the acetabulum would be the ligamentum capitis femoris. Head of femur to what? To the acetabulum. So from acetabulum to the fovea capitis on the head of the femur is the ligamentum capitis femoris. Going down to the knee. First off on the knee, it's not on your list, but we'll, we'll come back to it later anyway. Uh, we have the patella here, right in front of the femur. This portion up here on top of the patella, this is the um, quadriceps tendon. So this is the quadriceps tendon up here on top of the patella. This is the quadriceps tendon. And then if we go from patella down to tibia, this portion down here on the bottom half is the patellar ligament. This is the patellar ligament. It's this lower portion down here from patella to tibial tuberosity. The patellar ligament. <laughs> okay. Now we can easily tell which side is lateral on this model because we have the fibula right here showing us the lateral side. And so we have two ligaments on the side. We have the lateral collateral and the medial collateral ligaments. Lateral collateral, medial collateral. Lateral collateral, medial collateral. Lateral collateral, medial collateral. Lateral collateral, medial collateral. So those are the guys hanging off on the side. Likewise, we have menisci, these blue discs, are the lateral meniscus and the medial meniscus. Lateral meniscus, medial meniscus. Lateral meniscus, medial meniscus. Lateral meniscus, medial meniscus. Two menisci. Now the posterior cruciate ligament is easy to spot. It's this guy right on the back here, showing up right in the popliteal space here. This is the posterior cruciate ligament. This guy right here on the back, real nice and easy to see, posterior cruciate ligament. Then to find the anterior cruciate ligament, we have to pop the femur, or excuse me, pop the patella aside, and then bend the knee, and now we can see the anterior cruciate right here in the knee joint. So anterior cruciate right there in the knee joint there. Anterior cruciate, stretching right there across the knee joint. Would you say it's between the intercondylar eminence or like? It travels over top of them. Mm -hmm. So, anterior cruciate ligament right there. Yeah, it's gonna. I wouldn't necessarily say that it passes right in between because you have mm -hmm. some cartilage in between them, right. but uh, it's right over it, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful knee. But now we get down to the, excuse me, to the ankle and the foot. So on the ankle here, we have a ligament that stretches from the fibula to the calcaneus, the calcaneofibular. Calcaneofibular stretches right here on the lateral side from the fibula to the calcaneus. Pretty obvious one there, nice big one, calcaneofibular. Nice big one there. Then we have the anterior and posterior talofibular. They're going to go from the fibula to the talus. And so the anterior one we see right here kind of disappears right away. It's the anterior talofibular right there, kind of disappears right away. It's the anterior talofibular, running from the fibula down to the talus down below, anterior talofibular. It kind of runs away and hides right away. And then the posterior talofibular we see in this indentation on the back here. Posterior talofibular is also hiding in the back. The posterior talofibular is back here, hiding in the back here. Posterior talofibular there. Deltoid ligament. The deltoid ligament is removed from this model, but it would be a ligament coming down and stretching along the medial side here. So the deltoid ligament would come out this way, stretch along the medial side of the foot here. The deltoid ligament would be coming out this way, but they've cut it off this model.
Now we have the extensor retinacula. These are going to be tendinous sheaths that hold the uh, tendons that move the digits down, keep them uh, held in place. That's these two bands here. We have two extensor retinacula. We have a superior extensor retinacula, superior extensor retinaculum above, and an inferior extensor retinaculum below. Inferior extensor retinaculum down here, and they kind of fuse into one piece on the side over here. So a superior extensor retinaculum, inferior extensor retinaculum, superior extensor retinaculum, inferior extensor retinaculum. <clears throat> then on the bottom of the foot, we would have the long plantar ligament. Again, not on this model, but it would be stretching right across the base of the foot it would be the long plantar li ligament. When you get those twinges and arch of your foot, that's usually what you're feeling is kind of a little bit of a tearing of that guy. So that's a long plantar ligament there, running across the base of your foot. And then the interosseous tarsal ligaments are just all the other ligaments between the tarsal bones. Basically, if we didn't name it, you can just call it an interosseous tarsal ligament. It's just a generic term that means ligaments between the foot bones. Do we need to know the wrist joints? Oh, the um, flexor and extensor retinaculum on the wrist will actually go over with the um, muscles. So we'll just come back to those. And we'll come back to the.